Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my epic rant on the 2022 sequel, Hocus Pocus 2. Now, I've been trying to kind of shy away from doing epic rants, but this film deserves the title because I hated this film. I thought this film was awful. I thought it was horrible. And I thought it was honestly one of the most infuriating and crappy sequels that I've seen in a long time. And the reason for that is because I was actually intrigued by and looking forward to a sequel to Hocus Pocus. I was a fan of the first film. I still am. I'm not as big of a fan of it as I once was, but I still enjoy the movie. And I think it's an entertaining uh, mix of horror and comedy and uh, children's entertainment. And I was curious about a sequel. I remember when there was a book that was announced and, and it came out that was a sequel to the first film that was supposedly in canon with the first movie. I remember uh, checking out the special that Disney uh, Plus or, or the Disney Channel aired or one of those uh, uh, um, networks that reunited the cast. I remember following the cast reunions uh, during uh, anniversary screenings. I went in and I bought the the special edition Blu-ray. I bought the Target special edition, actually. The limited edition Blu-ray from Target because I enjoyed the film and I grew up with it and I definitely did have nostalgia for the film. So when Hocus Pocus 2 was finally announced... And Bette Midler and Kathy and Jimmy and Sarah Jessica Parker were all reprising their roles as the Sanderson sisters. You know, admittedly, I was kind of curious. I was like, okay, they're finally doing it. I was surprised they, they took so long, considering the film had such a uh, rabid and, and dedicated cult following. And then I finally saw the movie. And I was horrified by how bad it was. Here's the thing. I should not have had any faith in this because of the way that Disney operates now. Hocus Pocus itself was the kind of film that Disney today would never even touch with the 10 meter cow prod. Because it's so out there. It's not really something that ties into their brand as well. And it initially was something completely different to begin with. It was a haunted house kind of film. And then it was rewritten into something else. And it's honestly kind of surprising that Disney even released the first film. Because they weren't doing a lot of live action films at the time. Although well, they were starting to do a little bit more in the 90s. But a lot of them didn't really do that great. And here you have this film that's kind of a hard sell. Because of how weird it is and how it's not really necessarily a part of one particular genre. And they took a chance on it. And it didn't pay off initially because the film bombed. But then the film wound up getting a cult following. And so because of the fact that Disney right now is in desperate and dire need of content. They saw the cult following for Hocus Pocus and decided to take advantage of them. And that's why you have Hocus Pocus 2. It's not because they had a great idea. It's not because they had a good concept. It's because they wanted to take advantage of people's nostalgia. They wanted to weaponize people's nostalgia for Hocus Pocus and use it to their advantage. And it worked. If you think about it, I mean, there were a lot of people who probably got Disney Plus initially just to watch this during the... Halloween season last year in 2022, uh, and I wasn't one of them, but I'm guarantee there were a good amount of the people that did it just to see that film, uh, and probably did pretty good in terms of, uh, view counts, but to me, it wasn't worth it because what you have is a shallow, just completely hollow sequel that fails to recapture any of the magic of the first film at times is embarrassing to watch in terms of trying to see 
these actresses try to uh, be these characters again. And it acts as a pathetic and just low effort sequel to the first film to the point where it's kind of a slap in the face to the fans. And I'm stunned by how badly they botched this. I'm not going to sit here and say that I think it would have been a masterpiece Hocus Pocus 2, but it could have been at least a fun movie, even with the 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 cast uh, of uh, characters being up there in age. If you just had the, a better approach to it, if you didn't just try to do a lazy retread and just randomly have another black flame candle all of a sudden be there and... Do whatever you can to distance yourself from the first film for whatever weird ass reason. It's almost like this script was initially a remake, and then they were like, "Ah, we don't want to do that because that pissed the fan base off too much." So let's let's make it a sequel by just having very loose connections to uh, the original film and its characters. We'll have the Sanderson sisters, and of course, they will come back. And we'll have Billy, uh, but we won't have anyone else. We won't have Omri Katz's character or Allison Shaw's character from the first film. Nope. We won't even ask them to come back, which is insulting because Omri Katz expressed interest in this sequel numerous times to Disney. He said he would even be willing to come out of retirement to do it. Allison Shaw said she would she would be willing to do it. A lot of other people who were involved with the first film would have loved to have done it, but Disney never called them. Disney never even thought about them for a second, which shows you how much they actually cared about Hocus Pocus 2. If they cared about doing it the right way, they would have asked them to come back, but they didn't. And I know some people would be like, oh, well, you know, if they did ask them to come back and it sucked, you know, that would be lame. Yeah, it would be. But. The fact that they didn't even bother to ask them to come back is very telling to me because they deliberately made that decision because they wanted to distance themselves from the first film for whatever reason, despite them wanting to use a nostalgia that people have for it to their advantage. So yeah, it feels like a remake script that they just added a few things in there, like a little homages little winks to the audience or to the fans in terms of, oh, the Sanderson sisters, one of them said that line, or one of them did that again, or other sort of stuff where they try to add some extra bit of depth to some of these characters in just pitiful fashion. But I'll get to that when I, you know, discuss uh, uh, other elements of the film more in depth. I know I'm like eight minutes in and I haven't really got into my usual uh, flow when it comes to uh, uh, these reviews, but I, I got a lot of I got a lot of stuff to get off my chest when it comes to this movie. So bear with me. So, all right, let's get back into the flow of things. Let's start with the uh, director Anne Fletcher. Her direction was nothing remotely impressive or magical or creative it was flat and boring it was such a just bland looking film you could tell that they didn't have much of a budget to work with and the director didn't do much in order to make it look like they had more money in the bank to utilize for this film because this looked like a disney channel original movie and I, I, I think if you judge it on those merits, then maybe, you know, it's acceptable, but it's Hocus Pocus 2. And I know it was a Disney Plus original, which basically is the same thing as Disney Channel original uh, when it comes to the level of production value, but it's Hocus Pocus 2. You would think that Disney would funnel a little bit more money into it, considering the fact that you got Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy and Jimmy all back playing the Sanderson sisters. And considering the fact that 
there were a lot of people who loved the first film and they sell a shit ton of merchandise connected to it. So you would think that they would put a little bit more effort into it than their average Disney Channel original movie. But uh, apparently that's not the case. Which is which is disappointing. Uh, I think they could have picked definitely a better director. I don't know why they didn't just ask Ortega to come back. Uh, it's not like he's doing... Like, I, I, not like he's busy. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. I would say Ann Fletcher's direction is not as offensively bad as some of the other elements of the film. But it's still pretty bad. Now, we get too offensively bad when we uh, arrive at the script by Jen, Jen uh, D'Angelo. I despise this screenplay. This script sucks. It represents everything that I hate about a modern sequel and, or a reboot or a remake. It's lazy with a capital L. Like I said earlier, it doesn't do much to really make itself that unique uh it does what it it possibly can to distance itself from the original which is dumb to to just lengths that are just incredibly idiotic and make no sense like why is the shopkeeper guy the only person that has a a a, a memory of the sanderson sisters and what they did uh, at halloween all these years ago why is he the only one? There were so many other people that probably remember some strange stuff happening who were there, who, and no, none of them are ever mentioned. No one's ever brought up. You can do that in a line of dialogue. You can have some other random extra character just say, oh yeah, I was there too. It was crazy. But he's the only one that remembers anything. That's bullshit. That really is. And then on top of that, it does one of the most annoying current tropes today when it comes to a nostalgic property getting a sequel or a remake, which is taking a villain character and turning them into just flawed people who you should be sympathetic for. So taking the Sanderson sisters and making them into sympathetic villains where they're just misunderstood. And when they were, when they were young, they were persecuted and they, they, they were uh, burned at the stake and they didn't really, they weren't really doing anything evil. It was the, it was the men who were the evil ones and I'm just like, are you kidding me? You're taking these characters that in the first film ate children. That's that it's not it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, they they it was implied that they ate kids. No, it was they literally said that they ate kids and they stole their souls. So you have the Sanderson sisters who were evil. With just totally evil. Like they were enjoyably evil, but they were still evil. There was none of this, oh, they're sympathetic, oh my god, oh they were they were misunderstood and beep 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 be, and blah dee blah, blah. No, they were evil and they reveled in it. Now you make them into sympathetic figures who they were just misunderstood and then you have this whole scene at the end where Winifred completes the spell to get ultimate power and then she feels bad because the price is her sisters and then she this agrees to like give it up so her sisters can come back and they can all fade off together and have a happy ending and i'm like they ate kids they stole kids souls <laughs> i mean Sarah Jessica Parker's character was singing songs trying to lead kids to their doom. What is this? Why are we doing this? I hate this trope. It's so irritating and it has no business in Hocus Pocus. You didn't need to make the Sanderson sisters into every other Disney villain. I, I, it's just, it just pisses me off. 
you take what made them so unique, them being just deliciously evil, and made them boring. You made them boring now because now they're like any other Disney villain who like Maleficent or so on and so forth. And you didn't even need to do that. But they went there. And then when the Sanderson sisters come back, it's it's a letdown. They come back, they start singing and it's not even a good song and it's not even that catchy I mean, it is a good song. It's a good song by uh, Elton John, the, but it just doesn't fit. It doesn't fit with with the tone of the movie, and it's just very jarring. And then, speaking of the tone, the tone is so, so weak. It, there's nothing that's remotely creepy or kind of unsettling about it like the first movie. Everything is just super safe. And... There's other stuff too where they just try to painfully recapture the magic and it's just cringe. It's cringe inducing to watch when it comes to stuff involving uh Kathy and Jimmy's character, uh uh um Mary. She's trying to Oh, they're doing the old gag where she didn't have a broom. So instead of her riding a vacuum cleaner, she's riding Roombas. You're like what? And then you're still having Sarah Jessica Parker, who's like in her 60s as Sarah, trying to act like she's all spry and young. And you're half expecting to hear her bones creak every time she's trying to do a split. And when she's doing the whole youthful amok, 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 it, it just comes across as forced. It's, it's forced and it's pure cringe to watch because... She doesn't have that energy anymore. She's not that kind of person anymore. She's just, it's its like when Jim Carrey tried to be his character from Dumb and Dumber again. Like it, It's just, you don't have that energy anymore. You can't tap into that. That's what happens when you get older. Adjust the character. Make it, do something with it. Where, oh, she's trying to do it, but she's out of breath. Or, or she's trying to do this sort of stuff, but... She gives up halfway through because she's like, I, I can't, you know, I, I don't I don't have the same energy like I used to. You can play around with those sort of things. And, and it seems like there's kind of some moments where the, the script might be trying to do that, but it doesn't really fully go there. And I would say out of all of the characters, uh, when it comes to the Sanderson sisters, Mary, Sarah and Winifred, Winifred is the one that probably comes across the closest to how she was in the first film. Everyone else just feels like a pale imitator. And it feels like these, these performers, they just, they just don't know how to play these characters again. And it's sad to watch. And they don't have the same chemistry with one another either, which is equally as sad to watch. And it doesn't help either that the, the way that it establishes the new characters, uh, Becca, and uh um Cassie and um trying to remember who else it is. Yeah, Becca and Cassie. There's some other other gal. I don't know why she's not listed here. Really, it's mostly just Becca and Cow. Okay, yeah, I guess two friends, like Becca and Cassie, and then they have this other male friend and uh the the actually it's a father oh it's izzy that's who it is it's izzy becca and cassie they're th they're three best friends and they try to do this stuff with them where they try to make them outcasts but it doesn't really have the same impact as omri katz's character because they live in salem and i don't know i just didn't sympathize with them as much and this whole sort of stuff where they were into Wicca before, but then one of them had a falling out with her other friends because she wants to be popular, which is such an old decaying cliche. And the shop owner guy, he's the one that I guess he, he owns this gift shop now that is where the Sanderson's uh, home used to be. 
And he's the one that has a black flame candle because he's the one that when he was a kid, he saw the Sanders sisters that Halloween night, which I'm like, okay, like what? And he wants to bring their, bring their souls back for whatever reason he wants. He wants to bring them back. That's why he created, there's another black flame candle because he created it. And it's like, and, and it's not really clear why he wanted to bring them back other than just to bring them back. Billy's back and they try to, they, they, they try to add some depth with him by make it. So he only shared a kiss with Winifred because, and, and Winifred uh, did not, re- did, did not love him. What, which, okay. All right. Whatever. It was that's not really anything that's really that necessary or adds that much to his character. And you have this mayor character, the mayor of Salem, who's like the father of Cassie, and he's just obnoxious and just annoying. And that's the other thing. A lot of this the humor in this is just obnoxious and annoying. It's not funny. There's nothing charming about it. The, the, Gone is the PG thirteen type of humor. That's clearly for adults and is skirting uh, on an R, you know, because there are some jokes in Hocus Pocus that are very clearly intended for adults that have innuendo and other stuff like that. There's next to nothing like that in this script. And when the Sanderson sisters come back, it's not like they really get to do a whole lot. They do another dance number where they possess a bunch of people but it's not nearly as fun and as memorable as the 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 bit in the first movie. Uh, the the action when it is there is completely forgettable and there are zero thrills. Partly because of the fact that it's all done behind a green screen, so it looks incredibly fake. Uh, and the, you just don't really have the same stakes because you don't really learn to like love any of these characters like you did with Alice and Shaw or Thor Birch or or uh Omri Katz and their characters all you have is these new characters who just feel like they're just trying to shove them down your throat and you're like I don't like these people why should I like these people you should like them because they're girls and I'm like I no I liked Alice and Shaw's character she's a girl too I like Thor Birch's character she was a girl in the first movie, I like the Sanderson sisters. Why are you trying to do this whole sort of stuff with misogyny and other shit? There's like a line of dialogue with one of these characters. I think it's Becca who all of a sudden has uh, witch powers as you know, of, of course. Cause she's a mutant now, I guess. And she uses those witch powers that she all of a sudden developed uh, to help fight the Sanderson sisters at the end of the movie. And yeah, it's just a very just rushed and lazy sequel. It just repeats a lot of the same beats as the first movie, but it's not nearly as refreshing or as fun to watch. The Sanderson sisters feel like they are just shells of themselves for the most part, except for Bette Midler. They definitely gave her character more to work with. And even then, with the whole retconning things and making them into sympathetic figures, that even falls flat. The new characters, they're uh, honestly as welcome as a broomstick up the ass. The there's like a, a male bimbo character as well, who just who's there. I, I, for what reason, I, I do not know, I guess comic relief, but he's not funny. So he just feels like he's pointless and useless and doesn't need to be there. And there's a lot of scenes that were just like, just drag on forever. There's this whole bit about, a uh, 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 I think it's like a candied apple or something. Well, shoot this, this lady makes the best, uh, candied ab- caramel apples. And the mayor waits in line and, oh, he doesn't get his apple because of, you know, shenanigans involving 
the Sanderson sisters. There's a whole scene at a Walgreens in the pharmacy department where you have these really tired jokes about the Sanderson sisters being old and the kids are trying to trick them in terms of telling them, Oh, you, you should try this uh, cream that that's, that, you know, made out of, uh, you know, baby fat or something and or and our babies, you know, it, it, and it's, it's trying to tie into that whole sort of stuff, you know, in the first movie, but they never go, they never lean into it. They never lean into the fact that the Sanderson sisters were evil and ate kids and wanted to steal their souls because that doesn't fit the narrative that they're trying to tell that they're just misunderstood. And yeah, by the end of the movie, the three girls uh, that, that were friends at the beginning, they all get back together and they're friends again. And they're supposed to be like the new Sanderson sisters. And I'm like, that is a bunch of fucking shit. And so is the other stuff with this good witch character who I guess helped the Sanderson sisters at one point in their lives. But also is there to help uh, Cassie uh, develop her witch skills. I'm just saying. It does. It feels like a. It do, it feels like it's a lesser version of the first film, while also trying to be a remake. And you can't do either one, and be that effective because a lesser version of the first film sucks, and a remake of the first film also sucks. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I know there's also a scene with like a drag show, which I, I, you know, that didn't really bother me as much because that ties into, you know, it's trying to get, throw a little bit of a bone to the to the fans uh, who, you know, do a lot of the characters in drag, and I didn't think it was like as obtrusive or as uh, 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 obnoxious as some people were making it out to be. But yeah, it's just one of those things where. It is, at the end of the day, a completely unneeded, unnecessary sequel that only exists for nostalgia bait. It only exists to get people to subscribe to, to, to Disney+. Plus. It doesn't exist because it's a good idea. It doesn't exist because there's people behind it that are passionate about doing a Hocus Pocus sequel. It just exists purely to get eyes on the streaming service and it's just soulless. It has no spirit. It has no real life to it. The energy is gone and it's sad to watch because the first film, even despite its flaws, you can't say that it's lifeless. You can't say that it, that it's lacking energy and this lacks energy. It lacks life. Seems like the Sanderson sisters already got to this one and sucked its soul out. And, I mean, the cast, I mean, they're trying. Bette Miller is probably the one that delivers the best performance, but I I love Bette, and she's just doing some serious work here. She's trying to do some heavy lifting, but there's only so much that she can do. And... That being said, I did have some fun with Bette Midler back as Winifred. I got to be honest. Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, I loved her as Sarah in in uh, the first movie. This, she was hard to watch. It was hard to watch her try to do the same shtick. Uh, Catherine and Jimmy, it's the same thing. I, I just, I just, it just didn't work at all. It, it, it just it came across as pretty painful and I, it's just one of those things where I don't know what it is. Um, probably it might be a little bit of age and also lack of, lack of experience. I don't think Kathy and Jimmy had been doing a lot of acting uh, until she got the role to play Mary again. It doesn't help either that she's having to deal with like CGI Roombas behind a green screen I mean, there's only so much you can do with that. Uh, Sam Richardson, just completely 100% forgettable, nothing performance as Gilbert. 
uh, Doug Jones wasted. He steps into the shoes of Billy pretty well, but I don't really think there was a reason to wake him up, especially for this kind of role. Like he didn't really have much of a presence in the movie, kind of just ran around. It's almost like one of those things that's like he wasn't needed. That was just a bone that Disney threw out there for fans. Like, oh, hey, we are returning one of the characters from the first movie other than the Sanderson sisters. Uh, Whitney Peak is Becca. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say, and I'm going to call it now, I'm pretty sure that this actress has reached her peak already. <laughs> I don't think she's going to get any better. Uh, just, just a very unlikable personality comes across as very snooty comes across as somebody who you just don't want to be around, which is the, 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 the worst possible thing for your lead. Uh, Belissa Escobedo is Izzy. I would say she was probably the one that I could tolerate the most out of the trio because she, at least she was trying to be somewhat charismatic at least she was bringing passion to the role. She wasn't taking a page from Zendaya in Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, Tony uh, Hale is, is the mayor. Just just bad. Uh, the, the epitome of, of a guy who's just trying too hard to be funny and, and just fails on every level. Hannah Waddingham is the mother witch, the mysterious, the sinister witch who gives the spell book to the young Sanderson sisters. I, I honestly thought I was watching a porn. That was the level of acting that I got from uh, from this actress. I mean, am I watching a porno parody of Hocus Pocus, or am I watching the or am I watching Hocus Pocus too? Uh, Lilia Buckingham is Cassie, the mayor's daughter. Uh, Pretty stuck up character, didn't really care for her either, and I didn't really think that she had really that great of chemistry with her with her other castmates, with the two other supposed best friends of hers. I never bought the three of them as best friends. Uh Froy Gutierrez as Mike, the inept boyfriend, which that's great. You know, the inept uh jock character who runs around like a chicken with his head cut off. And is just a total himbo and a total dumbass for the majority of the movie. That's great. His name is Mike. Yeah, great. Of course. It's fitting. The film already pisses me off. You gotta have one of the, the, the dumbest character who's even dumber and even more moronic than Billy, even after all these years of him being dead, is a guy named Mike. And... I, I really don't know what else uh, to say. I mean, there were some stand-in extras that were portrayed in a flashback sequence, I guess, who played Max, Danny, and Allison, the three protagonists in the first film, which I apologize for not listing their names until now. Trust me, folks, I am a fan of the first film. I just haven't seen it in a long time, so I didn't necessarily remember totally right off the top of my head, the names of those characters. That's that's extra insulting. They, they're technically in the movie, but only in flashbacks portrayed by extras. So, yeah, not the best cast other than Bette Midler. The cinematography by Elliot Davis, nothing impressive. Same thing goes for the editing. The music by John Debney. A lot of it's just the same stuff as the first movie. And anything new that's there is not noteworthy. It's not worth mentioning. It's definitely not memorable. And it's definitely not something that you're going to listen to on your own free time. Same thing goes for the songs. Even though you got Elton John in there and the bitch is back. Like, that, 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 doesn't, really, that doesn't really mean that you got a good soundtrack. And... It's too bad because there are some scenes where you can kind of see a little bit of that magic between the three, between the Sanderson sisters, between Bette and Sarah and Kathy. Uh, I think there, there's some like behind the scenes footage. There's there's like scenes of them singing songs together in a booth and you can tell that they're having fun uh, with one another again. 
But in all honesty, some of the stuff that I saw in the reunion specials, I thought was better than what they showcased here. And I think honestly, it just comes down to the script. It comes down to the quality of the screenplay. I don't think the first film would have been such a cult classic if the script wasn't as clever as it ultimately wound up being, despite having a few issues here and there. And I'm, I'm looking at the budget here. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Is this a joke? I'm looking at the budget right now for this movie. And it's $40 million. Where did that money go? Because it's not on the screen. It's not there when it comes to the visual effects. It's not there when it comes to the, the, the uh, costumes and the set design or anything like that. Was most of it just to pay Bette Midler and the rest of the main cast? Because I'm baffled. I am. Bl I'm. I'm stunned. Forty million dollars. If you've seen this film, e even if you just watched the trailer, there's nothing about Hocus Pocus two that suggests that this costs forty million dollars to make. And you know that's crazy because I was talking about how they should have given a little bit more money to this. Well, I guess they gave it plenty, but. I, I apparently had a bunch of incompetent people working on the movie because he got $40 million to work with and it barely looks like it costs $4 million. Wow. That, that, is, that, is a, that is a shocker. Um, but yeah, I, I really don't know what else to say about this movie except it's just another one of those things where it really does solidify that sometimes it is too late. It's too late to do a sequel. And sometimes the better call is just to, just to not do it. Don't waste people's time. Don't waste $40 million on what amounts to something that's as disposable as a candy wrapper on Halloween night. So anyway, that's my uh, uh, rant on Hocus Pocus 2. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. See ya.